Welcome to the Tony Gaskin Show, best-selling author, celebrity life coach, and international speaker. The purpose of this show is to bring you motivation, inspiration, and education in the areas of life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Talks with Tony. Got a question today, and it is quite the novel. Uh, Every now and then we get one of these, so y'all bear with me while I read you this audio book that was written to me. Say, hello, brother. I was recently talking to this guy last month on January 18th after he had his daughter hand me his business card. I instantly contacted him the next day, stating in a voicemail, I'm not interested in talking to nobody with children right now, nor millennials, because most don't communicate well and always on Facebook or texting. Then I wished him and his daughter well. After he checked the voicemail, he instantly contacted me saying he heard my voicemail loud and clear and that his motive is never to just pass out a business card towards an interest, but he saw a light on me but respects my choice but then said knowing him that he will like to introduce himself to me in person over coffee. I ended up responding back saying because of how polite he sounded and respectful, I didn't mind giving it a try. Then we kept talking and I was up front with him about my weakness of cursing and to pray for me. He said what words I use, I specifically told him what words, and he laughed, but he said he would pray. I told him that I have to be provoked, and lately the men that kept approaching at church wasn't serious, and it provoked me to curse out of frustration. Then I told him I just don't want to be played with bad communication. So we meet the next day, and everything was amazing that we didn't want to leave each other, and I went to his house out of agreeing that we'll just chat and then go home, but it got physical. Not sexually, but orally, he tried to do something. Instantly, I said, we need to stop because I love God and I want to respect you as a man of God and myself. So we stopped. He said he would call after getting off work, but my instinct kicked in that something wasn't right because he didn't call at the time he said he would. So now I am peed off because my mind was racing about why I never wanted to talk to him from the beginning, but I gave grace and gave it a try. So when he called me, I questioned what happened and how come he didn't call at the time he said he would. He said he was tired and figured I would accept his change of schedule, so I started cursing him out because of being overwhelmed with the nonsense of going through excuses that don't add up, but I liked him and ended up humbling myself the next day apologizing But he rejected me, and it made me feel like I was wrong when actually I feel he was wrong. Yes, I was wrong. (laughs) Hold on now. (laughs) Okay, I'm back. Yes, I was wrong to use profanity, but I was honest from the jump. I hate him and want vengeance but the conviction of God won't let me. I want to stop remembering it. I've prayed and everything. I'm upset because it's a new year and I didn't start it negative and came into my year with praise but end up having this experience. Wow. But anyway, pray my strength because I want closure, but I also just want my husband from God without meeting the wrong ones, but I'm not desperate. As a single woman, I choose to wait and walk in purpose till my change comes. Any advice? I have to remain focused and fight the good fight of faith, but it's challenging and I'm not going to break. Thank you so much. And y'all have to forgive me. Now, I started laughing because I started picturing, you know, just my mom and just some of my family and, you know, Woo, this is a fireball. Now, sister, you are a fireball. And I mean, but here's where you have to find clarity. Because you said, but I'm not desperate. The reason why you said that is it's a common thing 
for humans to do is it's a cover up. You spoke that if you weren't desperate, you would not have had to say, but I'm not desperate. The, this is where your desperation showed. The man had his daughter hand you his business card. And you said, I don't want anybody with kids and to deal with any millennials because they don't know how to communicate and they're on Facebook too much and all they want to do is text. Guess what? You showed that you were desperate by taking the time to send him that. A woman who is not desperate would not have even wrote him. She would have thrown his business card away because he did not meet her standards or her preferences or her qualifications. So she would have said, okay, this is a young guy, millennial, have his daughter do his work, have his daughter hand me his business card when he need to be handing it to me, when he knows he wants to sleep with me. So why would you have, why would you use your daughter to pick up women? You a dog. You a dog, and you ain't no good. And so all of that right there, in this season of singleness, if you aren't truly desperate and you get clarity because you're listening to the Tony Gaskins show, but you're reading the books, you're taking the courses, you're going to get clarity. So now you're going to be able to see every man for what he is. So the first red flag is a man using his daughter to pick up women. And then he said, well, I don't just hand, you know, have my daughter hand business cards to an interest. You know, I would like to meet you. He said that because that's what he does. Yes, you do. Stop lying. You're trying to soften the, the past, the attempt to come on to this woman, and your daughter don't even know she's throwing your lobs. Your daughter don't even know she aiding and abetting to your grown boyism. So you need what you need to do, sister, is get this link and text him this. You don't need no vengeance. You need to text him this, this here link. And young man, you need to get your life together because if this was about business, then you can have your daughter hand out business cards because you're teaching her entrepreneurship and how to network, how to be a businesswoman. But you meeting up with women after your daughter has given them business cards and you trying to eat you something. So you trying to go oral on the first day and don't know what's in there cooking. It could have been herpes. It could have been gonorrhea. It could have been chlamydia in there. And here you is using your daughter to throw you lobs for you to go out to eat. Now that in itself is ridiculous. That's an absolute shame. Now see, back to you, sister. What you have to realize is that your desperation is seeping through your pores. Because when you wrote back, he said to himself, oh, she wanted, because you didn't even have to waste your time. If you are, if you are a strong, good woman on your grind, and you focus, why are you wasting your time sending me an email like I came to your job for an interview and you need to let me know that I'm not hired? I met you in passing, had my daughter hand you my card to show you how uninterested I am because I know good and well I should have handed you my card myself. So I did that because I didn't really care if you wanted me or not. So when you wrote back, that's what he said to himself. And so now the next thing is, so now he comes back with this normal response. Just a normal, oh, I'm so sorry about that. I'd like to meet you in person over coffee and introduce myself. That, that right there, that's his ego talking. That's not his heart. That's his ego because you're turning him down. Men hate rejection, and men hate rejection because that carries over into every part of our life. So he's looking at it like, okay, if you reject me, 
that means I'm a failure. So that's why he wrote that. And then you said, oh, well, you know what? I think I will meet you because you were so polite. Well, what do you expect him to be? You know, curse you out? And then when you met him, this what showed me that you've been in your head too much. You've been single for too long but doing the wrong things because you're not at peace. So you met him, and then you had diarrhea of the mouth. And you tell him your whole playbook, your whole story. You speak into existence about how you curse and how you curse men out and what you don't want and why, how you don't want to be treated. So you give him the whole playbook instead of letting him show you who he is. Now, see, you didn't read my book, Mrs. Right, or my book, Single is Not a Curse, because it would have taught you that in there. So here you are, you give him your whole playbook so he knows exactly who not to be. So now he's like, okay, all right, she don't like that, she don't like that. But you know what, this woman, she talking too much. She talking too much, she desperate. She desperate, she telling me too much. She done showed me her whole hand. She's so ready for love, it's sickening. This is what he telling himself. So then he says, oh, well, you want to go back to my place. So how you go from first being turned down because you're a millennial and you got kids and you use your daughter to pick up women to now being able to get a house visit on the first date? That none of that, none of that adds up. None of it adds up. So see, sister, what you got to do is you really have to confront that desperation and you got to be real. And you got to say, you know what? I am desperate. And more than desperate, I'm dehydrated. You know, more than thirsty, I'm dehydrated right now. And you have to confront that because that's what's holding you back. Because if you, for one, shouldn't even respond to him because of how he tried to pick you up. And then two, because you did and you went on a date, you should have been quiet and listening to him. He shouldn't have known that you cursed too much. And you are a comedian. I didn't know if Monique wrote this letter to me because, I mean, I broke down laughing just because of the way you wrote it. So I can tell when you were talking to him, you were like, ooh, I'm a Christian, but I be cursing. And, and he said, what curse words you use? And then you tell him the words, and then he started laughing and said, well, I'm going to pray for you. And then you said, well, these men driving me to cursing because the way they come at me at church, and it just make me curse. And so I know he was rolling, you're a comedian, you're fun-loving, you got a good personality. So now that's going to make you look even more attractive than you are. So he invites you back because you showed him too many signs. You talked too much. You told him too much. You was too friendly. You, you ignored all your standards that you told him you had, and then you ignored them. So he said, you know, she down for whatever. And then you got over there to the house, and he tried to do some oral. Now, you could tell me anything. So I don't know how really far it went. And if you got you a decent amount of pleasure and then was like, hey, we need to stop because I'm a woman of God, you a man of God, we need to stop. But you hadn't already got you some pleasure. And... So then he said, I'm going to call you, and he didn't call you. So now he already sending you another red flag to show you I'm not a man of my word. I'm not going to keep my word because when I tried to get me a little something the other day, I wasn't pleased. For whatever reason, he was not pleased, and it could have been a list of reasons. So he was not pleased, and that's why keeping his schedule, keeping his word to you did not matter to him. So he was trying to take you off. And then you take and curse him out. Why do you care enough to curse out a man who you just met? You giving these men too much power over you. Because if you at peace and you sound minded and you really walking with God and you really loving yourself and you are not desperate, a stranger, which is what he is, will not have the power to make you angry enough to curse him out. And then you curse him out. Then you go back the next day and apologize. And this is why I had to break down. 
you broke me down because I'm a man and I'm reading this just like he reading it. And at that point, I'm going to say to myself, this woman crazy. This woman is back crazy. This woman shot out of cannon. This woman told me she saved, then came to my house, let me go down on her, stopped me in the middle of it with a scripture, told her I call her, didn't call her. She got mad at me when she already told me she didn't want me because I'm a millennial who used my daughter to pick up women, then called me back and cursed me out when she just told me to pray for her because she cursed me and I who get on her nerve. So now she cursed me out. Well, now she just gave me the out. I see this woman crazy. So when you call to apologize, he turns you down because to him, you just show him that something ain't all the way there right now in your life. And he got scared. He like, this woman liable to slit my throat in my sleep. She's so fed up with these men like me. So he takes off and now you angry. And then you said it. You said, I I hate him. How did you hate a man that you only knew for a day? You're giving people too much power. And you say, and I want vengeance. The sin is already there because you're hating and you want vengeance. God counts sins when it happened in our mind. When we process it, we think through it. You know, already, he didn't already took you into a place of homicide or assault and battery. And if you stay there too long, you will actually end up uh, doing it. So I want you to think about this thing and really be mindful. Really be mindful and ask yourself, am I desperate? Do I really love myself? Am I happy? Am I peaceful? And you got to check yourself. So let him go. Forgive him because it's not his fault. He's doing what a man does, a grown boy. He's doing what a grown boy does when you let a grown boy do what he does. You ignore all the red flags. You ignore all your standards and your preferences and your stipulations and qualifications. You ignored it all. You went to his house. You gave him all the room in the world. So it's not his fault for doing what you allow him to do. Now, yes, he a grown boy, and yes, he going to man up, but a person will take what you give them. You offer me a million dollars, and that's going to make you broke. If you offer it, I'm going to take it because I'm going to assume you got a way to get it back. So you can't expect somebody to say, oh, no, 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 no. Don't, I'm not going to let you come over to my house even though you want to just because I'm just not, I'm just not like that. No. If you say I will come over to your house, he's going to say, okay, come on. And he's going to try to do and that's why he tried you like that. A man, and listen to me from a man, we will not try a woman sexually on the first date unless she didn't gave us a million clues that she is a little loose or a little desperate or very desperate. And that's what you showed him. So you got to evaluate your interactions. You got to evaluate your mindset. You got to evaluate what you're telling yourself you got to really be honest if you're listening to God, if you're reading your Bible every day. And I think you need to read your Bible every day because I don't think you'll be behaving like this if you're reading your Bible every day. But you need to get in that word. You need to take this thing seriously. You might need a few sessions of coaching so you can really talk and vent and work through some things. So email us if you need it. But you have to work on you. And then once you work on you, your demeanor and your countenance will change. Random, strange men will not have power over you to make you angry and frustrated and want to curse and sin against God for a no good man that you just met a week ago. So think on that, sister, because I love you. You got a lot in you. You can work through it. And to the grown boy, get your act together. Get your act together for a lightning bolt hit you upside the head. Get your act together, having your daughter pick up women and you ask a woman over to your house so you can eat you something on the first date. Well, you're nasty, and you don't know what you could end up with in your mouth, in your lips, and then want to be around your daughter with sores on your mouth because you're trying to eat on the first day and don't even know a woman from Eve. Get your life together. And I ain't just talking to him. I'm talking to every grown boy out there like him that's listening to this. Man, get your life together. 
Hey, this is Tony Gaskin. If you have a question for me, just want an outside opinion from your brother, from another mother, just giving you my two cents and hoping it doesn't bankrupt me, send your email to inbox at TonyGaskins.com, inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon.